Alex here with another review. This time we're taking a look at the Innova 5420 Pro. Now this is an alternative to a voltmeter, but it has a lot more capability because not only can we check voltages, we can also test the battery alternator of the vehicle, as well as test and power some components on the vehicle to determine if they are functional or not using this simple device. So first I'll show you the contents of the kit and then we'll move over to the vehicle so I can show you several of the different tests that this probe can do. Now this does work on normal vehicles that use 12 volts and also on heavy duty vehicles that run on 24 volts. And I have placed a link in the description down below to the 5420 probe if you wanna get one for yourself. And here's what the 5420 probe looks like. It actually fits nicely on the hand. This is plastic, but there is some texture right here, some rubberization for grip, and also the front of it is articulated, something I have not seen before in a probe. And here's where the probe tip is inserted into, and they have included two probe sizes, this longer tip and a shorter tip with some protective covers. And if you need extra length or if you don't wanna use your vehicle's automotive socket, they have included this extension cord, 20 feet in length that allows you to connect the probe directly to the car's battery. And I have connected the probe to my vehicle's 12 volt socket. Now the very first test I'm gonna show you is how to test the vehicle's battery. And we're gonna look at voltage. So as you can see, I have selected 12 volts on here and then I'm gonna press on this B a rocker right here, I'm gonna press up, and that is the current battery voltage, 11.4 volts. Now, a normal car battery should sit above 12 volts, typically 12.6 will indicate a fully charged battery. So this 11.4, tells me that this battery is low and needs to have some charge applied to it. And that makes sense because this vehicle has been sitting for a while without being driven. But if you drive your vehicle quite often and your battery is low, maybe the alternator is not charging the battery. So let me show you how to test the alternator using this probe. I'm gonna turn the vehicle on. And I'm gonna take a voltage measurement again. Notice that the voltage now says 13.5. That means that the alternator is charging the battery. And most of the time, a good alternator will typically show 13.5, and I've seen it sometimes as high as 14 volts. If I were to see the same voltage as before, 11.4, or if I were to see 12 volts, that's not gonna be enough voltage to charge the battery, leading me to suspect that the alternator is no good. And here's another test that you can do with this probe. Perhaps you have a light inside your vehicle or some accessory that no longer turns on. So now you don't know if the issue is the light bulb inside the car is out or if you actually are getting power to the light bulb. And here's a particular connector that normally should have power. And if I take the probe and I insert it in there, notice that I am able to confirm that there is power going to here 12.2 volts, again, I got that red light and that sound indicator, which means that the issue is not with the wiring, the issue is with whatever is hooked up to here has stopped working. Now, in case you're curious about that beeping sound, yes, that can actually be quite annoying because it's quite loud when you are using the probe like this and you are able to see the display. However, that sound is very helpful when you are probing in an area where you are not able to see the display. That allows you to hear that there is voltage without having to look at the display. But it is also important to check for ground too, because remember, you need positive 12 volts and also ground for a device to function. Now this particular screw right here, that is providing ground. You can see that there's two wires. So two things are using ground from there. If I wanted to confirm that that ground is good, I can probe that, I'm gonna tap that. And notice that the beep sound comes on again. It's actually a different tone. We get a green light and an indicator of zero. Again, the advantage of that tone is that if I am not able to see the display, I can hear the tone and know that I have found ground. But let's hear that sound difference again. I'm probing and I'm not able to see the display. That tells me I found positive. And that sound tells me that I found negative, which is ground. And here's the fuse box of the vehicle, and it's kind of in a tight spot, and I wanna check if there is power going to that fuse, so I'm gonna go ahead and probe that fuse, 
And sure enough, there is power because we can hear the beep, but I really wanna see the display and see what the actual reading is. And that is the advantage of this probe, being able to turn the tip like that. Now I'm gonna probe that same location and I can hear the beep, but I can also see the actual voltage reading. And before we move over to the next test, I wanna show you how the probe can be connected to the vehicle's battery using the included adapter. The red clip goes to the positive side of the battery and the black clip is gonna to go to the negative side of the battery. And now the probe can be connected as normal. And here's a big advantage of using that adapter extension. And that is if I'm testing all the way to the end of the vehicle and I wanted to check for power in here, now I can take the probe all the way over here. And this time I also wanna show you what those lights look like, which do help to eliminate the area that I'm working on. Now let's say I wanted to confirm if this light bulb was working or if the issue was the wiring. First, I'm gonna check to see if there is power coming here. And first off, we have a good ground. So now I need to see if there is a 12 volt voltage and there is no 12 volts. So it is very likely that the issue is with the wiring. But let's confirm that in fact that this light bulb is working. So I'm gonna take the wire that goes to the light bulb. This is the positive side. The other side is already grounded and we know we have a good ground. And I'm gonna apply 12 volts to that wire that is going to the light bulb and the light bulb turns on. Confirming that the light bulb works the issue is with the wiring of the car because there are no 12 volts getting to the end. And the probe can also allow me to test devices that are not mounted on the vehicle, such as this blower. There is a grounding clip on the probe. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that to the ground side of that blower, and then I can apply 12 volts to the positive side of the blower. Now this blower is a little bit small, so there's not a lot of torque to it, so I'm able to hold it like this, but if a blower was larger, I would wanna bolt it down to make sure it doesn't go flying when I apply power to it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and touch the probe to the positive side and I'm gonna apply power with V. And sure enough, I can confirm that this blower does in fact work. And the probe is also able to supply ground using this switch right here. Instead of pressing B, if I press down, that's gonna give me ground. Now, the reason why this is helpful, let's imagine if this blower is mounted on the vehicle and we suspect that instead of the red wire being the issue, we suspect that the ground is the issue. And we know ground is right here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna touch the probe to where ground normally would be, and then I'm gonna apply ground and the blower sure in fact turns on, telling me that the issue is with the ground side on the vehicle since the blower does turn on when I apply ground with the probe. And before I show you how I can also activate relays with the probe, I wanna show you one last example with the light bulb. One side is grounded and I wanna confirm if the light bulb works, I'm gonna touch that and then apply 12 volts. Sure enough, the light bulb works. Moving over to testing relays, they typically have a diagram on the side that tells you the function of each pin. Let's take a look at this diagram. As you can see, 85 and 86 is what activates the relay. Now, the relay, when it's on the off position, you can see that connection 30, which is pin 30 down here, is always gonna be connected to 87A. When the relay gets power, then this is gonna move and then it's gonna make a connection to 87. So right now, first, let's confirm that 30 does in fact make a connection with 87A. And if you take a look at the bottom of the relay, there are numbers next to each pin, and here is pin label number 30. So I'm gonna take that grounding clip, and I'm gonna attach it to that. Now the one right on top of it, that's 87A. So this is what we call a continuity test, and we should get a beep if there is a connection there, Yep, there is a connection there. So, so far this relay up to this point is good. So we have just confirmed that pin 30 does in fact make a connection with 87A. But notice that 87 should not be connected to pin 30 when the relay is off. So let's confirm that. This is gonna stay on 30 and 87 is right here. If I touch that, no beep. Nothing, so that's good. That means that there is no connection in between 30 and 87. This relay is good so far up to this point. But now let's activate this relay, and when the relay gets power, we should get a connection between 30 and 87 instead of 87A. Now, where are we gonna apply power to? That is gonna be applied to 86 
and 85. You can see on here that this is the relay coil. And again, I'm gonna locate those pins on the bottom of the relay. So let's activate this relay. Here's 86, so I'm gonna connect the grounding clip and then I'm gonna touch 85 and apply power to it and we should hear a click. And you can hear that relay clicking. Now technically, because this is a relay coil, it does, there's really no polarity. I can put the grounding clip on this side right here and then I can apply power to the other side and you can still hear that relay click. And you can also feel it in your hand clicking. And most of the time, that click that you hear and feel is that quick sanity check that tells you that the relay is working, but I wanna show you how to take that to the next level and in fact confirm that it is. I'm gonna connect one alligator clip to position 30 and then one alligator clip to position 87. The two positions that should close when the relay gets power. And this is simply a voltmeter that has been set to continuity, meaning it's gonna beep when there is continuity. So I'll show you what that looks like you can hear that there is a beep. And we should hear that beep when the relay gets power because it's gonna bring both of these guys together. And if you recall, pin 85 and pin 86 is what activates the relay. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate the relay by putting the grounding clip from the probe on one of those pins, and then I'm gonna apply power to the other one. Once I do that, we should hear a beep coming from the voltmeter. Now, we're also gonna hear the beep from the probe, so hopefully you can differentiate the beep from the voltmeter, and I'll try to move it close to the camera so you can hear that. I'm gonna touch here and apply power, and you can hear the voltmeter making that sound, indicating that there is continuity when we apply power to the relay, which means that it in fact, the relay is bringing these two positions together, fully confirming that this relay is functional. And I also wanna show you what this selection switch does. You can see that it says three volts, five volts, or 12 volts, 24 volts. I have connected right now the grounding clip and this side to the voltmeter so we can get a measurement of what's coming out of the probe. When the switch is in the 12 volt position and I press the B, we know we are applying 12 volts to whatever is connected to the probe. However, some devices on the vehicle are gonna need a lower reference voltage, such as five volts. So I move this to five and if I press the B again, notice on the voltmeter, now we are getting around five volts. But if you need an even lower voltage, reference voltage of three volts, again, I'm gonna press the B. The probe is able to supply that. Notice that the multimeter shows three volts. Now, you don't wanna go around just poking and probing stuff in the car. You could potentially damage something, and especially on newer vehicles, they're sensitive, and if you inject power in the wrong place, something bad can happen. So it is important for the technician that uses this probe to be able to fully understand the car's wiring schematics, be able to refer to the service manual to understand where it's safe to probe and what components are able to accept what types of voltages, especially because as we saw, we are able to output different test voltages with this probe. But in the hands of a trained technician, in my opinion, an automotive probe is a must tool for anybody who does any kind of electrical troubleshooting on their vehicle. Now there's a couple things that could be better. And the very first one is simply throw in a case. I really think a case is essential, especially when you have little accessories like the little probe tips. I know I'm gonna lose them if I don't have a simple case where I can put them in. Something as simple as a zipper case should do the trick. The other thing I would like to do is be able to disable the beep sound. As I showed you on the video, the beep sound can be very helpful if you don't have visibility of the LCD screen and you wanna hear what the probe is doing, but a lot of the times I am able to see the screen, especially because of the swivel and the beeping can be quite loud. So being able to disable that would be a great addition and hopefully they can add that to the probe in the future. So I'll place a link in the description down below to this probe if you wanna look at it further or acquire one for yourself. If you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.